Today I'm back at Abe Kruger's Green Home Renovation Project here in North Ormond Park, Atlanta. And today, the home gets full. Abe's chosen to use two types of spray foam insulation for his project. Closed cell foam for the wall cavities and open cell foam for the gables and roof line. But the end result will be a super tight and energy efficient building envelope. I'm with Moody Osier of Premium Spray Products. They're a Marietta, Georgia based company. It's always good to go local when you can. Moody, what are the benefits of spray foam insulation? One of the reasons why people will choose uh, uh, spray polyurethane foam over some of the traditional items such as fiberglass or cellulose is they're looking for that one major additional benefit and that's the ability to provide an air seal to a project. Basically your spray foam is expanding to fill that wall cavity. Absolutely. It's a custom fit. It is. Because what will happen is, let's take a closed cell foam for example. Uh, it expands roughly 30 times its original liquid volume. So what's going to happen is, no matter what the substrate is, it's going to find all the little nooks and crannies, which that's what you want to fill in to stop that air infiltration that occurs into a structure. Open cell foam, it expands about 120 times its original liquid volume. So you can imagine all the little expansion that it's doing, what it's able to cover when it expands to that degree. Brad Krilla with Advanced Energy Insulation is the spray foam contractor doing the installation. Brad, walk us through the process. We always come in, you know, after the electrical and plumbing is completed. Um, we prep all the walls, cover all the windows, can foam around all the windows, just do any prep work that may be needed, and then we just start the process of the insulation. We'll spray, and then come back and clean over any studs that need to be cleaned so the sheetrock has a good surface to, to be uh, placed. I know in the attic, you're not going to have to do any trimming. Abe's not going to finish the attic space, so you're just going to leave the foam as it is. The more the better. What we do like to tell people is make sure you use the right product in the right situation. You basically have a good, better, best choice. Fiberglass is very good. It's been a traditional product out there for many years. Open cell foam is a better product. The main reason is it does have that expansion ability to get into the nooks and crannies and it has an air seal at the appropriate depth. The best by far is the closed cell foam because you do have those benefits plus the added benefit of rigidity once it is cured. They'll fall in line with the budget also. Fiberglass, open cell, closed cell. But in this case, we needed the extra R value here yes. in this uh, wall because mm -hmm. we have limited amount of space to preserve floor space. So the R value we get from a closed cell foam made that the right product to use here. Right, we could not have used the open cell here because we didn't have enough area to get the appropriate depth of the open cell to meet the R value that we're trying to achieve. Plus, it is uh, actually solving a problem. Since this is an old, much older structure, they had to do some unique framing. You didn't want to take up a lot of interior floor space doing a traditional two by four wall frame. What will happen is we're going to fill this void all the way up onto the frame structure here, and now the, the substrate and the frame structure is going to be totally bonded together. We're going to have a tremendous monolithic seal that's going to basically seal in this entire structure. You're gluing the existing wall to your new furring wall on the inside here, becoming one solid product. Absolutely. The closed cell foam has a tremendous adhesion factor. When you spray it, it's there. And we're also dealing with the fact that we have a variant substrate because this is an older structure. Because we are transitioning from different substrates, that is going to be completely filled with the closed cell foam. Whereas if you use some of the traditional methods, it would never ever fill this up. One of the choices here was to go all the way to the roof line with the insulation versus the ceiling, which is a maybe a traditional approach. Why that choice? It has been discovered that it is better to actually move the insulating power to the true thermal envelope of the structure. Basically what you're doing is you're creating a semi-conditioned attic space. Therefore, when you see a lot of the construction, particularly in the southern parts of the country, you will have the HVAC systems located up in the attic. They leak at a rate anywhere from 25 to 30, 33 percent. Well, guess what? At this point in time, you're not at leaking out into the environment. It is staying within the thermal envelope. It has been proved to be a much more energy efficient structure. Foaming your home. That's just another easy way to be green. As always, our challenge to you, put your green on one leg at a time. Join the community by subscribing to our YouTube channel and help spread the green by liking our videos and sharing with your friends. Greenshorts.com, that's shorts, 
with a Z.